All right there. How's it going? It's Newbie Prepping here. I'm Rich. I'm Mark. And welcome to the channel if you're new here. Uh, for some people this might be the, the first video that you ever watch uh, due to the title. Uh, this is actually a remake of a, an old video that we did before titled Why We Started Prepping. Basically that video is just a little bit outdated now and we felt like needed to just uh, re-record it to properly and more accurately describe our uh, feelings and why we started prepping and why we continue to prep. So if you're new to the prepping world, uh, you probably got inspired to uh, look up prepping online uh, from TV shows or like documentaries or anything like that and that's probably how you came across this video. So this video, like I said, is about how and why we started prepping. Mark, do you want to start us off? Well, I started prepping I'm going to show me age now, uh, a good 20-25 years ago. Uh, I was in my 20s and I realised that the, the way the society was uh, and the risks of certain things happening, uh, I thought I needed to prep just in case. And it has just been in case. Uh, I'm not a person who spends all my money on prepping and I decided that uh, because of money situations you don't know from one job to the next job how much spare cash you're going to have I decided to be more of the bushcraft side of prepping so I would actually rely on skills and uh, what I can find in the wilderness or in the surrounding areas uh, to survive and that's how I started my road Rich. Okay. Um, Mark is actually the one that uh, showed me the whole world of prepping um, uh, and uh, survivalism in general. Uh, I was always interested in learning uh, survival uh, skills and like going out and pretty much just getting more connected with nature. Um, but uh, it was it was Mark that really uh, uh, showed me and opened my eyes to uh, the world of prepping and like situations that can happen. It sounds like I'm about to start talking about conspiracy theories and everything, but uh, uh, the important thing to uh, realize is uh, the difference between conspiracy theory and prepping is that prepping is that you're preparing for things that can actually happen. Like uh, aliens arriving probably isn't going to happen. Uh, a hurricane affecting your city or town or country, that probably can happen. Uh, and that's the exact sort of thing that I want to prepare for. I want to um, be able to uh, protect my family, uh, protect myself, and uh, basically just survive whatever comes. That's the reason why we come out and do overnighters, because uh, we want to practice what it's going to be like out in the harsh environment if we ever need to. Obviously, I realize in a real SHTF scenario, it's not just going to be like a fun overnighter, it's going to be uh, grueling and, t and difficult. But that's why we're conditioning ourselves, that's why we come out and practice. That's the main thing. So, for those who are new, what was that you said? SH? SHTF scenario. So, um, SHTF is... Um, Go on, just I, say it. <laughs> it's shit hit the fan. It's, uh, the, the term is shit hit the fan, so basically if the worst thing happens, that's your time to go. When shit hits the fan, that's your time to go. Or just before, if you can judge it. Ready. So as you get more experience of reading signs, the warning signs, uh, you, can, you make the judgement call, right, now's the time for me to bug out, or bug in, uh, depending on what your plans are. So we've been doing this channel for three years now. Three then. years. And when we started, uh, there'd be many people uh, who'd be clicking on, going, ah, oh, some fruitcakes out there, you know, where's their tin hats? We've just come out of a pandemic. Now, three years ago, if I said to you, we're going to be going into a pandemic, everyone would be saying, ah, see, look. Conspiracy, the uh, he's a Fruit Loop, he's tin hat wearing, everything like that. <laughs> he's bonkers. Well, who's bonkers now? You know, and denying stuff what could happen just because it's never happened in your lifetime. Well, 
everyone there who's watching this has lived through a pandemic you know luckily and I say luckily it weren't as, as severe as it could be you know I I am I know there's been quite a few deaths uh, but it could have been a lot lot worse if you look go back to like the Spanish flu uh, that was really bad and the outbreaks of Ebola uh, if that actually went globally again that would be a severe uh, pandemic so we have been quite uh, lucky this has been a mild pandemic uh, but it's brought to light other issues which we will cover in episodes to come absolutely just touching back on uh, people saying that we're basically conspiracy theorists uh, um, usually whenever I bring up prepping to friends or uh, people that I know they usually have a similar sort of response where it's like oh so do you think that like in the future it's going to be like a fallout game like uh, uh, bombs are going to drop and there's going to be apocalyptic wastelands zombies. and like you're going to be fighting zombies it's like no that's not that's not what I'm prepping for see the lowest the the outcome of every SHTF scenario is uh, what we call civil unrest and uh, that is the thing that I'm prepping for the most because it's uh, not only is it the outcome for every uh, SHTF scenario but it is uh, the most likely thing to happen uh, with uh, the smallest amount of uh, build-up basically. Uh, but we'll go into that a little bit later. Uh, what we're going to talk about now are the different type of SHTF uh, scenarios that can happen. Um, we'll start off with worst case scenarios. Uh, so worst case scenarios, Mark? Uh, asteroid attack. Uh, asteroid strike, so I say. Asteroid strike, yes. Uh, nuclear war as well. Um, basically, the sort of thing that can happen that will wipe out a large majority, if not all, of the population. There's not a lot we can do uh, about that, apart from building bunkers. Yeah. Extinction events. Yeah, pretty much extinction level event. Not much we can do about it, but we do have some plans, but obviously there's not much that can be done. Just below that is the eruption of a super volcano, like Yellowstone, for example. Yeah. Um, what can happen with uh, Yellowstone? Uh, well, obviously the media areas would have uh, the pyro now forgive me my vocabulary is not great i am dyslexic uh the pyro uh, the pyro pyroclastic blast it's the cloud of volcanic ash what rushes across the land uh uh extreme uh speed and it incinerates near enough everything what it touches because it's really extremely hot now uh, that's the the surrounding areas what also would happen is all the uh, molten ash would go into the atmosphere. So for Yellowstone, it uh, that ash would uh, go up into the atmosphere and start blocking out the sun. And that will uh, force the northern hemisphere uh, into a like a, a, win a, a nuclear winter type thing. Because uh, you would have acid rain, because uh, all the, uh, the ash. Uh, people breathing in the molten ash uh, when it gets into your lungs because it, it's like rock or and glass and stuff like that it would actually choke up your lungs so it would be dangerous for your health just to breathe it in and obviously with no sun uh, the sun being blocked with no sunlight uh, plant life would actually die off and so your crops won't be as good uh, so these are just some of the side effects of a uh, super volcano yeah uh, apart from the devastation locally uh, so uh, most uh, quite a lot of America would be <laughs> wasteland because of uh, the actual blast uh, so if you ever seen uh, 2020 uh, 2012 oh yeah uh, the disaster movie yeah. the disaster movie uh, no it's a survival movie because people survived uh, so be on the Fair positive enough. side uh, <laughs> that was just that was that was Hollywood showing what Yellowstone could uh, turn into if it erupted, mm -hmm. uh, but they would have got their information from uh, 
scientific sources. Yeah, scientific yeah. sources, because they would want to make it as accurate and as frightening as possible, because mm -hmm. it's Hollywood. Indeed, yeah. It's also important to remember that just because it's in America, everyone else uh, who's watching this that's not in America, is that uh, just because it's happening in America doesn't mean that it won't affect us. Um, a lot of the time the world uh, watches on the news as stuff happens overseas. Um, but as Mark said, uh, the ash cloud would spread across the world and it would be uh, bad for all of us. So that's why it's so close to the extinction level event uh, that we discussed before. The next one down after that is pandemic, viral outbreak. Uh, I think we all know uh, quite a lot about that, but um, uh, should we talk a little bit about that? Uh, the, the more worst case uh, uh, scenario for uh, like a pandemic, um, I suppose, would be like people dying on the streets and everything, people just dropping over dead and Ebola. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Ebola would be a really bad case. Mm -hmm. Highly contagious, 8% uh, eight, eight death rate. Yeah. Uh, so for those. Uh, computer geeks who want a zombie apocalypse uh, the closest thing what I can see as happening as a zombie apocalypse would be if Ebola crossed to rabies and you had a rabies Ebola mix mm. uh, that could be something like a, what would could resemble like a zombie apocalypse uh -huh. i.e. the infectious it won't be the people biting you it's just coming in contact with them yeah. would give you the actual disease so it won't be like them running around trying to bite you, but it's yeah. on them lines. Indeed, yes. The thing is with uh, a lot of pandemics is um, if the governments do actually react quick enough, uh, then uh, they can stunt the uh, spread of it quite uh, easily. Um, so when we're talking about pandemics and viral outbreaks, we mean something that can spread like super fast, like the R rate would be like uh, extremely high, uh, high, that sort of thing. Seven, ten. Exactly, yeah. Whereas uh, the coronavirus was, I think, at worst, 2, wasn't it? Or yeah. maybe 1.5, something yeah. like that. Um, so, yeah, but that is still something that you have to prepare for. The next one down from that is monetary collapse. Monetary collapse uh, doesn't just uh, have uh, the same causes, yeah? Uh, the pandemic, what we're just coming out of, could cause a monetary collapse because uh, governments are borrowing money especially for the furlough and unless the economy does get back to normal uh, quicker than what it exactly is it could cause a monetary collapse uh, interest rates have been low for a long time so there's been a lot of borrowing it's only a matter of time when we can go back to like the 80s where interest rates go skyrocket you know, where you, you're paying £300 on your mortgage now, three months' time, you could be paying £1,500. Uh, you know, it, it could go to that extreme because it has happened in the past. And monetary collapse is like got different things. So, banks failing can cause it. Uh, it's the stock market, it's all about having faith in. The people buying stocks and shares, if they haven't got the faith in the stock market, they pull their money out because they don't want to lose it. That calls a panic, what can cause collapses. And and sadly, you've got some people in the world who are the multi-rich and who want to make a profit and they do it, on, do it on purpose. They see an opportunity, they buy in when it's low, they sell when it's high, and that's the way they make money. Everyone makes money that way. But some people do it on purpose uh, to like, underfund companies so they write for a takeover. Uh, and But it all has a knock-on effect. And you can see in your uh, local towns, when you go to like the beaches, I know we're coming out of a pandemic and a lot of shops are not open, but how many of the shops are actually not there anymore? It's different closed because of the pandemic or uh, opening soon or something like that but how many have actually shut down if you look in the windows have they still got stock in the windows if they've got no stock and you can't see anything in there then that shop's gone and you will see that everywhere and having too much of that is bad for the economy 
what could lead to a collapse. Another SHDF scenario, um, a similar sort of vein. So we're just going to uh, cover them uh, all together. So floods or droughts, which is obviously the opposite of each other, mm -hmm. uh, and other unexpected weather changes. Snow in Texas. That's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> that's, exa it. that's exactly what I was going to say. What was it, 29 deaths um, yeah. uh, due to exposure from uh, the cold weather because the Texans just, uh, they were completely not set up for it. The, um, the electric, uh, the power grid went down. Yeah. Uh, it was a proper SHTF scenario. Yep. Uh, in our time, in a place uh, that you just wouldn't expect it. Like uh, just a regular sort of place. Um, like a, just, as far as I know, uh, not too many natural disasters have ever happened there. And then just out of the blue, snow. Tons of snow. Um, so yeah, that is a genuine worry, and uh, it makes you—it really makes you think that uh, you, you might think, "Oh, I'm safe where I am. Nothing ever happens here. I'm like high elevation. I'm like just in the middle of the country. Whatever. Nothing can get me here." You never know what's going to happen. Slight little addition from a, another day. Uh, we forgot to talk about floods and droughts, so we're going to do that now. So. Uh, floods and droughts. Uh, well, droughts is not something uh, we would have to really worry about in Northern Ireland. Nah. Uh, obviously, if there's a drought, you do try and preserve as much water as you can. Recycle water if it's possible. Uh, uh, you can always set up like little uh, wind traps uh, to capture water. Um, Probably yeah. the best thing to do would be to move near the coast uh, so that you can get seawater and then purify it maybe. Yeah, uh, you can do that. Or if there's a stream uh, which not dried out. Uh, but probably, yeah, go towards the coast mm -hmm. and stay cool as much as you can. Yeah. So, so droughts are pretty obvious, but with floods, a bit more complicated. Uh, it's, it definitely seems like it anyway, because uh, where I'm from in the West Midlands, uh, there's... there's uh, uh, constantly uh, reports on uh, the news about like little towns that have been completely stricken with floods like houses destroyed uh, well the bottom floors of the houses destroyed from water and everything um, uh, honestly you think that they would be a bit better prepared uh, since they're so close to like uh, a stream or a river but uh, no like a lot of these people get caught completely unawares but uh, needless to say it, well not needless to say if you live near a stream or a river, you've got to be prepared for a flood. Even in my home city, it's become common knowledge that uh, a, uh, a field that's next to this one uh, pretty big river uh, floods pretty much uh, every year, like almost like clockwork. Uh, our city's pretty prepared for it and we're pretty used to it, but uh, yeah, so if you're in a town or a city where uh, it does flood, like uh, if there's a flash flood for whatever reason, um, then you want to be prepared for that maybe get like a little inf inflatable dinghy or yeah. something uh, they sell, sell them in Audi sometimes yeah. uh, uh, also uh, have some of like your cherished cherishable stuff uh, like photos and uh, papers documents uh, don't keep them downstairs have them upstairs out of the way up in your loft mm -hmm. you know if you're not using them all, all the time mm -hmm. uh, just or have them so you can move them if the flood warning happens. You know, generally you get to know if the flood is coming because uh, it would be on the news. Uh, heavy rainfall predicted, floods in certain areas. So move to your valuable stuff upstairs if possible. Uh, get to higher ground uh, if you can. You know, avoid being in them areas. Avoid being in them areas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, simple as that, really. Like, uh, if if you're any in any way serious about prepping, move yeah. to an area where uh, you don't have to worry about flooding. Exactly. <laughs> you know, it, it did baffle me that uh, quite a lot of the residents would, um, and I'll, I can understand, but they moan about oh, it flooded and we've lost everything and the government's not doing nothing about it. But you moved there. You live in an area where it's prone for flooding. If you don't want to lose, uh, get everything damaged from flood, don't live there. You know, uh, or the worst ones are where uh, 
contractors and uh, housing developers start building houses on flood like floodplains, but don't say that it's a floodplain. And you could go look, it's 10 years before a major flood happens, before those planes flood. So some people could buy these places and not be aware that it's a floodplain. And that's down to the developers then. And you should be able to, you can't, but you should be able to, uh, take the developers to call for not notifying you uh, or you, uh, have you ever done your survey? Because if they didn't bring up saying, well, this is a flood plain, you're buying this at your own risk of being flooding, then someone should be able to can. But you know, how much money you've got to actually pursue that? Just do your own research and uh, if you want to be sure that you're not going to get caught up in uh, one of these floods like a lot of these people do, uh, just make sure that you don't uh, well, make sure that you buy, uh, buy or rent a place to live somewhere high up, essentially. There's your coffee, mate. Thank you very much. Oh. Leave that cool down a little bit. Well, we will talk about uh, boiling waters and stuff. And as you can see, I've just got one of the aluminium water bottles, which I'll stick in the fire. Uh, it, just wear a glove when you're taking it out of the fire. Uh, Bit of health and safety for you. you don't, <laughs> I don't want anyone burning this. Also, oh, I saw it on that that mark on that newbie preppy show. <laughs> you know, I have got a glove on. He just took a metal bottle straight out that fire, and he was perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you like milk, sir? Oh yes, please. Thank you. Oh god. Be prepared. I I I, I thought like last time, the last video we made, he had some milk on him, and it was perfect. Uh, I didn't think he would have any milk this time, so I didn't even ask. But oh my god, talk about prepping. Talk about being prepared. That's beautiful. So here's one that we didn't mention in our previous video. Electromagnetic pulse or uh, solar flare. Yep. Uh, I suppose that kind of touches back on what we were talking about with uh, the Texas power grid. Because um, uh, that would cause the power grids to go down. Loss of electricity. Yep. And uh, I don't know how true this is. Now I'm sure I'm going to get someone saying... Uh, I'm talking about my backside. I heard uh, from uh, a documentary that if a power grid went down to replace the, I'm going to say generators, or they're not generators, but to replace the actual power pack type thing in the grids would take 11 years to make. Now, I don't know if that would be 11 years if they've got electricity or just 11 years without electricity. That's quite concerning because they were saying that the power grids are not geared up. Now this was an old documentary and so I would hope that the, uh, the companies and the governments would have a backup plan now just in case a solar flare happened or uh, there was a EMP pulse uh, first strike uh, from a hostile uh, country uh, yeah so if that took out the grid it would be a long time and it would take us straight back to like almost stone age you know because how many of you know how to make tools you know we wouldn't be able to make iron uh, and I know you're gonna say well there's shops we're still gonna have them but there everyone will be fighting over resources and the governments won't be able to control uh, if you look at this, uh, the riots in America yeah what's happening the riots over in Europe uh, this is all uh, uh, public unrest and they struggle now and there's they say there was uh, if you look at the ratio of uh, rioters to the police force or protesters to the police force as like you've got 10,000 protesters if they all turn violent yeah and all started attacking because they want to get the resources the food and whatnot how many police are there you know there's only like there could be like a thousand police if you're lucky a thousand police and there's 10,000 against them uh, the only good thing is that majority of people are uh, decent upstanding citizens and they don't really want to break the rules 
I was actually going to mention this later on, yeah, uh, about um, society in general. They want to keep the status quo as long yeah. as possible. Yeah. So they want to, uh, they don't want to, the majority of people don't want anarchy. And then you always got the minorities who want anarchy. Uh, but luckily they're the minorities. And yes, they, uh, they do whip up attention uh, at certain events and it does escalate. But uh, if in the right frame of mind, that person wouldn't escalate into being a brute and going around bashing people. Uh, and it's it's so easy to go from a peaceful protest to a riot. It's so easy. Uh, and if you look at all the riots, what's happened in the last uh, few years, for example, how many of them riots have actually... Uh, how many of those protests have turned into a riot? Now, I would say at least 90 to 95 percent of uh, peaceful protests end up turning into some form of uh, public unrest. Either a, a few windows being broken or a full riot where there's like uh, petrol bombs being thrown and stones and rocks and even people in America being shot, you know. So it is quite easy to go for uh, to change the state of play really easy, you know really quick mm -hmm. you know one wrong, one wrong word uh could be taken out of content and it just escalates mm -hmm. yeah so there have been an increase in riots over the past couple of years, usually contained uh, totally to uh, capitals of countries like London or Belfast. Uh, uh, some caused by big events and some caused by uh, smaller events, smaller events that some believe uh, uh, bring uh, bigger issues to light. Uh, for instance, um, uh, we'll just uh, go ahead and mention it, uh, the BLM demonstrations, the Black Lives Matter, uh, the death of George Floyd uh, caused demonstrations uh, which uh, did uh, turn into riots in some cases, um, all of which happened after the world was uh, uh, put into a state of pandemic. Um, it didn't uh, stunt it whatsoever. Of course, that was just one event. Uh, there have been many uh, protests that uh, didn't go bad, uh, but it is important uh, to realize that um, a, a protest could turn into a riot and it can happen anywhere. Uh, for example, the most recent one uh, to record in this video is the uh, Belfast riots, um, where uh, uh, it wasn't just uh, next to the, uh, the capital in Belfast. It was happening in uh, re normal residential streets. In fact, there was one quite close to a friend of ours. They could literally look out their window and see people throwing petrol bombs at riot vans. Um, and that's the sort of thing uh, that you've got to uh, prepare for, essentially. That's the thing that I'm prepping for the most, is uh, the day when, uh, whether it be rioters or whether it be des desperate people, come marching down my street uh, starting riots, destroying property, or even uh, breaking in and looting stuff. That's the thing that I'm prepping for, and that's when I would uh, bug out, or hopefully before, hopefully anticipate it, or see it happening before, uh, see it brewing before it starts happening, and then bug out. So of course that flows rather nicely into the uh, final thing that we're talking about with SHTF scenarios, and that is the public and civil unrest, um, uh, gangs and mobs and raiders, uh, event essentially going around communities and stealing um, uh, for whatever reason, whether they're desperate or whether they're just angry. Um, that's, uh, it's the easiest thing, I say the easiest, it's like the most likely occurrence because it's not relying on like a, a country wanting to bomb us or a, a, a weather pattern changing. It's what can happen uh, with uh, uh, people and what's going on in society at that mm. given time. Uh, have you got anything to say about public or civil unrest? So, the reason why we say that everything goes into public unrest uh, is in any scenario, there's always key factors. Now, the key factor is food. Uh, it's always going to be a shortage in whatever scenario what happens so if there's a volcano going off there's less food being produced uh, floods food would get damaged uh, droughts obviously droughts. can't grow yeah, food yeah can't grow food 
So there's, it all comes to food. And they say that you're only three, wheel, uh, three meals away from anarchy. Now I think it's a bit longer than that. Majority of people would have at least three days of food in their house, at least three days, you know, before they really see uh, the difference in what is available for them to heat. Now, if you are uh, got a pantry, which not many people have got pantries, you would have a couple of weeks worth of food. And it's, if you're going to the supermarket and there's a rush, as we've seen at the first stages of the pandemic uh, last year, toilet paper was in demand where you couldn't find it anywhere unless you went to a back of a van and he was selling it for like 10 times the normal price. Uh, and you will get people who are the racketeers who would profit off of other people's misery. And you'd get, uh, when there's the food shortages, people react differently to what they would normally act, uh, react to. Well, to start thinking of themselves, rightly so, because you've got to think of your, yourself and your family. And they was try and hold food, uh, what can't be preserved or will stay fresh for a long time. Now, during the start, starts of the pandemic, uh, dustbin men were taking pictures of all the waste food, which they were seeing in the bins. And it was stuff like fruit and veg, uh, where people just bought so much, uh, bread, uh, and it was all short-term perishable stuff and I think I saw one picture of a bin and it had like 10 loaves of bread unopened because someone and they, they've gone it gone mouldy now yes I we would say be prepared and prep and have your stores but you got to be sensible in what you're storing uh, buying bread and thinking that's going to last me well, no, it, it's not going to last you. Uh, buying rice or uh, uh, pastas and uh, ready break, you know, mm -hmm. where it's like wheat based, that will last. And kept in the right conditions, it would last for years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, not having food would be the main cause for uh, people to turn violent. They will start stealing, they will start. Uh, behaved in the manner where they wouldn't behave before and public order will go out the window mm -hmm. absolutely I think you pretty much covered everything Sorry. everything I was going to say <laughs> but if you uh, you know liked what we said and enjoyed having this discussion by the campfire uh, give us a thumbs up I believe the little thumbs up button and the bell for any notification will be that side uh, should be, should be. Uh, give us a thumbs up and share because uh, it all goes towards them alg algorithms me being dyslexic vocabulary <laughs> sorry the algorithms al the thing what they work out the percentage yeah that's it <laughs> that's the one uh, it gets worked out and it uh, makes a uh, our videos become more public and more visible for other people. It genuinely does help. Yeah. If, if you can just hit that like button and uh, if you want to subscribe to see more videos yeah. from us about this sort of thing. Thank you. Yep. And that's... Um, uh, there's uh, a little bit more. I he's got a biography. <laughs> yeah, he's done a novel. He's, he's just, he, he, this is the reincarnation of J.R. Tolkien. Because this <laughs> looks like the, like the Lord of the Rings, the, the, <laughs> like the longest journey on earth. Believe me. They're and hopefully, again. hopefully, they're on back again. <laughs> it, it's like gone around the world in like 600 years. So, Not this, 80 days. <laughs> 80 days? That was just like the first page. <laughs> right. <laughs> So yeah, a little bit more I want to say. Um, we do take the mickey out of each other all the time. Absolutely. Um, He's lost his bookmark. <laughs> oh, I mentioned that before. I mentioned that before. Already mentioned that. Okay, no. Uh, or literally every <laughs> word we've already mentioned. It's all been done. I've, I've li got a little script here, a, a big script, and uh, we've or already mentioned it all. So never mind. I just want to say one thing. Right, now, some people are going to find this funny. 
other people might find this offensive. But for, for everyone out there who think we're the lunatics for doing what we do, uh, hello, you're the lunatic. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, it, it is true. Uh, when, when the pandemic came out, when we were first talking about it, uh, a lot of people, they uh, were saying like, oh no, you, you're blowing things out of proportion, you're a fear mongering, uh, you're just being conspiracy theorists. And uh, as soon as the world went into a pandemic, um, their uh, thoughts and ideals quickly flipped around and, and then they were saying, oh no, it's the government actually doing this and doing that. And uh, yeah. uh, like uh, they're injecting microchips into your arm. Um, and so suddenly, uh, the people that are saying that we were conspiracy theorists now sound a lot like they are uh, conspiracy theorists. Um, now, uh, I don't want to judge people too much. Uh, you can believe what you want to believe and everything, blah, blah, blah. Um, uh, but yeah, it's important to uh, uh, think about these things. And uh, no matter your thoughts on conspiracy theories or on prepping, um, it's always good practice just to have even just a stock of food in your house and some paper money, uh, some physical money, uh, just in case anything happens, uh, just so that you can protect and feed your family. So if you do have a family that you want to protect, then you should prepare for the worst. Yeah. Uh, you buy insurance uh, for fire in your house. You're uh, a you prepper. Buy, you buy insurance for your car if you have an accident. You're a prepper. Uh, buildings and contents insurance. You're prepping. Uh, some of you have uh, life insurance, I'm medical prepping. care. Uh, so you, you're a prepper anyway, mm -hmm. and you don't know it, but you, you're prepping just in case. We just take it when we can, we take it that one step further, where we can go out and enjoy this beautiful country. Yeah, beautiful weather when it's not raining, and it always rains in Ireland. It always rains. Uh, in England and in Ireland, especially in Ireland, uh, but it is a beautiful country, and we should be getting out there and enjoying the nature of the stuff what's around us. And if you can get out there and enjoy it, but also do something practical like preparing skills for in any sort of eventuality, then why not? Like that's the main reason. Like I said before, uh, why I. Uh, initially got into it uh, just so that I could enjoy the countryside but also have a practical reason for learning these skills. Yep. I don't see and anything wrong with that. It's good for the children. Uh, as you know, some of you might, uh, if you're new to this channel, you're bound to see my little girl from time to time. Uh, and she loves coming out. Uh, she loves doing it, uh, coming out, finding like, uh, edible mushrooms. But she doesn't eat them until she checks it with me. Uh, she picks the berries uh, off the uh, bushes and she collects firewood and she knows how to start a fire, you know, and she's only five, you know. I hopefully, wish I knew that at that age. Hopefully she won't burn the house down, but that's a separate subject. <laughs> well, hopefully she won't burn a forest down as no, well, as, uh, so, yeah. some people have, yes. unfortunately. To get uh, the viewers and the public in more involved, uh, we were discussing doing like a campfire discussion. and. We would just be sitting by the campfire, no bushcraft, you know, just a fire going and having a cup of tea uh, and just chatting. And we're going to just choose topics. So if anyone wants to uh, give a suggestion or got an opinion on something, we can talk about it. Absolutely. You know? And I'm not saying we're going to be experts in the subject. And if, you, if you're going into string the theory, the name. Yeah. <laughs> if you go to string theory, I know someone very dear to me who would be really good at explaining string theory to you, <laughs> but if you say string theory to me, I'll just get you a bit of string and say, there's my theory, it drops to the floor. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but... String theory. Yeah, string theory. <laughs> it doesn't stay in one place. Uh, but we can add like, other people coming in to exp uh, explain different things. Mm -hmm. uh, other people's perspective, yeah. Guest appearances from other people, yeah. uh, uh, from uh, that we know from the community, and yeah, it would just be great just yeah. to uh, get a, around a campfire and just discuss stuff about mm. uh, prepping. Yeah. Uh, so any sort of uh, suggestions that you have, just leave them in the comments below. Anyway, yes. I believe uh, I believe that's everything. Yeah, yeah, that's everything for now. Fantastic. Well, we said before, but if you can like favorite and subscribe to the channel 
we would very much appreciate it. Yeah. And thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. We've yeah. been Newbie Prepping. I'm Rich. And I'm Mark. Thank you very much. We'll see you again. And stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.